Hi everyone, uh, welcome to Smile with Sandbox. Again, this is Rod Anderson, and today we're sitting down with Mike. Uh, Mike, tell us who you are, and uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. Hi Rod, um, glad to be here. Thanks for having me on your series. Um, I run a company called Mermat Construction, uh, and we're a full service design build general contractor. Uh, been around since 1978. Um, full service means that we work with a client uh, sometimes before it's even a project. Uh, it's just an idea. It's a goal. Uh, and for sure there's some challenges. So we try to find solutions to that. Um, come up with a sketch, you know, a list of requirements, uh, turn that into a full set of working drawings, which we do in-house here um, in our department. Uh, we can do a code review and feasibility study and then uh, go for permits and essentially uh, at the end of the day we go and build it and do the construction fees. So that's a full tur turnkey offer. Um, sometimes the clients are already in the design phase and in that case um, you know we engage all the stakeholders, uh, the trades, the consultants, the lenders, uh, the client, and along with our expert expertise and experience we find creative efficiencies and uh, try to eliminate errors um, and uh, in, in that process, you know, I like to think that, that we're the experts in uh, building solutions. That's great. Uh, Mike, tell us, uh, other than growing the greatest beard ever, uh, <laughs> what did your business look like heading into the tail end of 2019 and what you were planning, uh, planning for in 2020? Uh, well, we were very optimistic at the end of last year. Um, early in 2019, we were hit with, a, um, well, it was carried over from 2018, but we had steel tariffs from the U.S. Uh, that kind of disrupted a bunch of the construction uh, industry. Uh, oil prices, similarly, um, you know, were, uh, were quite low at the start of the year. But then uh, towards the end of the year, oil prices went up. Uh, the tariffs were removed in May, uh, and we started seeing some real... Uh, optimism in the market and, uh, and in our industry. So we were ready to hit the ground running in, in 2020. Um, the, the only setback that we thought, naively at the time, was uh, the price of land, because the price of bare land was still, had not been corrected in a number of years, and that was still a barrier to some people getting into the market. So, um, you know, we had a strong repeat client base. Um, and, uh, and, and that set us up for a really busy 2020. Uh, and uh, we, were, we were really looking forward to it. So then we get into 2020 and uh, tell us a bit about the implications of the crisis. When did it hit you guys? And you know, in the construction industry, what did that look like? What challenges were you faced with? And, and uh, just take us down that path a little bit. Yeah, well, when I first heard of this virus, you know, I, my first uh, um, yeah, first feeling was disbelief, I guess. Uh, we had heard of, you know, swine flu and, and, uh, and, and bird flu, and uh, this was just going to be the bat flu, uh, as far as what I thought. Boy, was I wrong, completely wrong. Uh, and I thought maybe, you know, it was just going to hit the... Uh, aviation sector, tourism sector, uh, and that would be it, but absolutely not. So as the stats started coming out and our world started changing, um, you know, that disbelief turned into fear and worry, um, health and safety of my staff, health and safety of my family, first and foremost, uh, the inner circle kind of thing. Um, my daughter's a, a nurse down at Sheldon Schumer, so she's right on the front lines. And uh, my parents are, are um, you know, high risk, so I was uh, worried about that. And then, uh, you know, my second family is my business. So just as important, I, I'm, I'm responsible for, you know, the safety of uh, all, all my staff, my partners, and, and clients as well. So, um, and then ballooning out from that, and, and the, the, the worry bubble expanded to the industry, right? Like we're... Uh, construction was deemed an essential service when this first all, all happened, but then we saw Quebec shutting down construction, Ontario followed suit, and we were really keeping a close eye on Alberta and making sure that we would maintain, uh, you know, our essential service. So, um, 
you know, our, our, I guess our, the biggest challenge, those are the worries, but the biggest challenges that we had at that time, I think was the uh, rapidly changing information. Um, the, you know, the, there was daily briefings at every level of government. Uh, things were changing so fast. Uh, it, was, it was, you know, a daunting task to keep up with it all. The employment standards were changing, OH&S standards, you know, from a safety perspective and work, workplace uh, uh, safety. Uh, and then we had to worry about our contractual obligations and what, what did that mean to what we've promised our clients, timelines, deliverables, all that kind of stuff, right? So, I mean, lots of challenges that way, but really um, um, from an operation standpoint, our biggest challenges were getting information to the field. Uh, after the office was closed, we had to find a way of actually transmitting drawings, information, photos, um, um, schedules. Uh, and then, uh, you know, we had delays in getting materials, delays in getting permits, delays in getting financing uh, due to places being closed, people working from home. Um, it, it just, it, it's, it's a, a nature of the beast, but it was certainly a, a, an ugly beast. And then, uh, you know, in the midst of all that, trying to attract new business because you can't just work off of what you're working on today. Um, so, uh, you know, that, that in itself was a, was a large challenge too. So. Find that, uh, from a new business perspective, uh, were people open to have conversations with you? How did you go and, and look to engage people in the middle yeah. of this thing? Yeah. The, the middle of this thing is, is, is not the time when people, you know, uh, want to be answering the knock on the door or the, or the cold call phone, uh, phone call. So really we, um, um, really had to focus on which clients are going to be COVID immune, <laughs> so to speak, from a business perspective, right? Um, and, and those were the ones that, that really reacted quite positively and uh, all, all being said. But um, yeah, it was uh, some, some interesting conversations for sure. But we're all in the same boat. So uh, the conversations were not, uh, uh, not un, un, unwilling. So it was, it's, it's been good. So you talked about workplace safety, um, communication when offices are shutting down, sourcing of goods um, and delays and, and those kind of things. If you, if you were to look at the, the biggest issue, the biggest crisis that you faced uh, during this, what would that have been for you? The biggest crisis? What, um, would, what would be the biggest stumbling block that you faced was, was the changing information for sure, yeah, information. Um, and uh, but but we you know we worked through that. We got our directions um, from the uh, Calgary Construction Association and in turn from the Canadian Construction Association. We were all lobbying um, with with the government to try to uh, get the information right as quickly as possible so that we can act quickly. And and really, that's uh, the best thing that we ever did was was uh, act quickly. So. So tell us, uh, do you feel we're coming out the other side of this now, Mike? And uh, what does that look like to you and your business? Well, you know, uh, yeah, I think we are coming out the other side of this, but, but not to where it was before. So uh, will things go back the way they were? No, but are we, are we adapting and, and evolving into this new reality? Sure, um, you know, are, are we getting better at things? Definitely. Can you tell us, share with us a little bit about how you feel your business is better today than it was pre-pandemic? Um, well, the bottom line is that we're more efficient. Um, you know, we put systems in place uh, that uh, should have been in place a long time ago. Um, that, you know, a lot, a lot of people say pivot, that, that the business kind of pivoted. I don't feel like we've pivoted so much as, as leapt. We've, we've taken a leap forward. In, in all these things that we, we were eventually going to go there anyways, but this was the, uh, the incentive to do it now and, and to, to do it rapidly. And like, you can't even think about it, right? It's the blink. It's the Malcolm Gladwell. Just, just, you just got to do it. Um, enough of that preamble had been done in previous years that now it was a time to actually act on it. So, um, you know, it, it, what that means in the end for the client is it's, Lower building costs, shorter timelines. So we've we've taken a lot of the waste out of the progress out, out of the process, 
uh, trimmed a lot of waste out of wasted time in um, uh, site guys driving to meetings. Now we can do everything online. Uh, at, at, at first it was a necessity, but now, hey, it's, it's, a, it's a handy byproduct that, um, you know, we're actually more in more constant contact with the field staff than we have been in the, in the past. So, um, you know, we also, at that time, we were talking about going to an online safety system. And you, you hear me say safety a lot in this, uh, in this talk, but that's really where our industry is. But um, uh, the online system is, is taking a lot of the paperwork, a lot of the time, and a lot of the, the waste uh, out of uh, keeping track of, of incidents, making sure people are up to date with their tickets, making sure that people are on site, um, you know, are qualified and, 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 and prepared. Um, so that's, that's all been good. So, um, we're better because we're more efficient, but I also want to think that we're more resilient. Go through something like this and it makes you feel like you can survive anything. <laughs> and I don't want to put that to the test. Um, uh, for sure the bar is getting raised every time. I mean, my dad, in, when he was running this company in the, in the uh, early 80s, started in 78, but in the early 80s, we were hit with the NEP. Uh, Western Canada was dealt a tremendous blow. Um, so, you know, it happens over and over again, and we just have to adapt to it and, and, uh, and keep going. Great. I love your comment on being resilient. And um, is that what you'd like to see uh, your brand uh, and business kind of remembered for as we come through the crisis? Yeah, you know, I, th I think... First and foremost, uh, anybody who's dealt with us and, and uh, certainly the clients, uh, for better or for worse, are going to remember us for our no-nonsense safety policy. <laughs> um, again, there's that safety word again, but that really has been where the major majority of the change has been. Uh, zero tolerance, you know, but what that means from a client perspective, um, well, what it means from a, from a staff perspective is that they're safe and the job's safe. What it means from a, from a client perspective, safety infractions mean lost time. And time is money, uh, you know. Uh, so th the importance in that is is not to be uh, uh, to be joked at. But uh, I would, what I'd like to be remembered for is is that thriving in change, not just surviving, thriving in change. Where th this this year is going to be our busiest year yet. Um, we've got so much work on the on, on the books. Really looking forward to two two thousand and twenty one. And it is that you know it's the old. Uh, the old proverb of the, the willow tree in the storm, and it's, it's the willow tree that has the ability to bend with the wind, and uh, it's the mighty oak that is strong, but unyielding, so in the storm, it breaks. So um, we're, we're trying to be more like the willow tree, and, uh, and I think that's, you know, not, not merely changing, but we're evolving. So this is the new, this is Mermac 2.0. <laughs> We're ready to, to roll on uh, with some of these improved uh, processes, more efficiency, and, um, and, and uh, look, looking forward to a, a really big uh, 2021. That's wonderful, Mike. Thank you so much. Uh, thriving and change. And uh, thank you very much for leaving that with everyone. And uh, we'll let you get on with your day. Okay. Thank you very much, Rod. Thanks for having me.